Show me a hero and I will write you a tragedy. F. Scott Fitzgerald, the great American novelist, said that. And so, has this ever happened to you? Imagine watching a, a great program on TV and say it's on HBO, which I love. I, I watched a lot of things on HBO. And say the program is based on a true story that actually occurred not far from where you live in the same county. And then a few days later, after you watch the program, you're talking to somebody you know at an event, and he tells you he's one of the real people depicted in the program. And I go, no. Are you kidding? And he said, no, I am not kidding. So I'm very happy to have as my guest on this show, Neil DeLuca, who was the city manager in Yonkers during the period that the HBO series Show Me a Hero depicted. And I am Bruce Apar, and you are watching Hudson Valley WXYZ with Bruce the Blog. <laughs> Hudson Valley WXYZ with Bruce the Blog is a weekly TV program that brings you interesting people in our community who are making uh, unique contributions to our quality of life. And we also like to explore ideas and topics and issues that are important to all of us. And by the way, you might be watching the show right now on YouTube uh, or on cable TV. Uh, and if you aren't watching it on YouTube, you can go to Hudson Valley WXYZ with Bruce the Blog or to Townlink TV and you can see all of the uh, past shows that we've done as well. Um, so welcome Neil DeLuca. Thank you Bruce. <laughs> uh, and uh, you remember it was just a couple of weeks ago we were at uh, a, a very nice event. It happened to be a political fundraiser um, and I never realized until then that you were the city manager uh, uh, during the period, and, and, and you know, as you and I have talked um, on a couple of occasions since, since that uh, time, a few weeks ago when I realized uh, you were there, um, the Show Me a Hero, for those of you who don't watch HBO or don't um, know about the program, uh, was, you know, as Neil agrees, and again, uh, he, you know, he was there at, at the actual um, events that are depicted in the program, it's extremely accurate, right? You would say yeah. it's extremely accurate. It is extremely accurate. Which, yeah. as you know, you know, often in those cases, uh, when a uh, quote unquote uh, fictional TV program uh, is based on true events, um, they really take a lot of liberties. But from what you've been telling me, Neil, with a lot of the details uh, from the show, um, they really didn't take that many liberties, right? Yeah. They, they sort of stuck to the personalities and the events that happened at the time and, and, and all of those things. They, right? they got a lot of it right, right on. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we were all, uh, you know, somewhat apprehensive about it, how they portray Yonkers and all of us, but uh, I, I think they did a bang-up job. And, and you were just telling me uh, you met David Simon. Now, David Simon... Uh, for those of you maybe who were fans of another HBO series, The Wire, uh, he was the producer of that, mm -hmm. and he uh, hooked up for The Wire with a, uh, a Baltimore Sun journalist, Baltimore Sun being the, the daily newspaper uh, in that city, um, and so The Wire was based on you know, reporting, reportage mm -hmm. of uh, police activities, yeah. and, and then the same uh, partnership, uh, David Simon and, and the Baltimore Sun journalist, um, did show me a hero, um, and and David Simon, you know, I, I think deserves enormous credit for um, going really deep, right, into the weeds on this, um, and it's a very complicated situation, and somehow he managed to make it dramatic. Uh, somehow, yeah, uh, <laughs> right. He, somehow. He, he made it dramatic, but he, accurate, right? Um, from the tone of the council meetings to the 
goings on in City Hall and what was in people's minds at the time, he got a lot of that, right? Right. And you know, we and we haven't even said yet uh, that Show Me a Hero is about the uh, public housing uh, desegregation efforts in Yonkers that were ordered by the federal government. Right? Yes. Um, and what I want to do, just to help set the scene before we go any further, Neil, um, is just describe a little bit of the show and of the situation. And I have to give credit to Wikipedia, which I went on, and they have a very thorough article uh, on the show and, and on the historical events in Yonkers that the show uh, is based on. And so, uh, Show Me a Hero is an American miniseries based on a 1999 nonfiction book of the same name by former New York Times writer Lisa Belkin. Mm -hmm. uh, did you know Lisa Belkin? Yeah, yeah she interviewed that. me for the book. For the book, right. Yeah. Um, and the book details a white middle class neighborhood's resistance to a federally mandated public housing development in Yonkers, New York, and how these tensions affected the city as a whole. Uh, written by David Simon, as I mentioned, and journalist William Abzorzi. Um, it was directed by Paul Haggis, and a lot of people might not know his name, but they know Crash, this movie that he did a mm -hmm. number of years ago, which was nominated for all kinds of Oscars and awards. It was a very good movie. Um, and uh, Show Me a Hero uh, was just shown this past August on HBO. And if you do get HBO, but you didn't see it, you can always go to that HBO On Demand and watch it. Uh, any time. But one of the things that is in that description, Neil, uh, it says the book details a white middle class neighborhoods. That's not, it's not a neighborhood, it was the whole city. There, right? Well, y Yonkers is a ward system, so there were actually seven different neighborhoods that were impacted. It was right. the east side of the city, but they were individual neighborhoods, and they remain, you know, in pretty individual now, even now. Even, yeah. So now, uh, just to advance the, the uh, conversation that we're having and going to have, uh, this again from Wikipedia, and Wikipedia is a very, very useful and in, in many cases valuable resource. Uh, the one caveat, uh, as I just pointed out, like where that passage says a, a neighborhood, and it was a lot of neighborhoods, is Wikipedia is written by anybody, me, you, so sometimes some of the details of the facts could be a little bit off, off uh, line, or off base, I should say. Uh, so anyhow, the story for Show Me a Hero was based between 1987 and 1994, mm -hmm. and so the years you were city manager. I was appointed January 1st, 1988, and mm -hmm. was there till 92, or and uh, no, uh, I think 90. November of 1991. One, yeah. right. Um, uh, and I'm going to read this again description. Federal Judge Leonard Sand, who you knew well at the <laughs> yeah, time, right? Very well. Right, yeah. Ruled against Yonkers. Uh, which did not want to right, abide by the desegregation housing covenant, as you put it, that mm -hmm. right, it had signed or it had agreed to previously. Um, so this federal judge, as depicted in, in the uh, series, was you know, to totally um, um, immovable. I mean, he, you know, he, he kept telling Yonkers to go back and get it done. Um, and he mandated uh, public housing for 200 units, which was this innovative form of public housing called scattered, right? Which yep. had never been done before. No. Which, and so scattered public housing means it's in, in various locations. Instead of the, the typical quote unquote project where thousands of people lived in one place, the concept was to put smaller numbers, 24, 40 units in different places throughout the city. So it doesn't have the effect that some of the other public housing uh, projects had had you in know, the city. creating the, sort of these ghettos. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, where crime, you know, would uh, fester yep. and things. Yeah. The whole plan was to make sure that it didn't happen, and it it it, it worked, I think. Right, uh, and then it goes, on, you know, and, and then it goes on to say that, you know, where the tensions started to uh, smolder, to say the least, was that these scattered sites, uh, as they're called, in some cases will be built in. Again, this is according to Wikipedia. A quote would be built in the quote affluent, mostly white east side of Yonkers, and at the time, as we were discussing the other uh, evening, uh, a lot of this housing or all of the housing was on the west side of the Sawmill River Parkway. Right? That's accurate. Yeah, um, and so that's where the the central figure in Show Me a Hero, and the tragic figure, uh, as you find out at the end of the series if you didn't know what happened in, in real life, which I did not actually, 
uh, was Mayor Nick Wasisco, who was elected at 28 years old, yep. and as the, the program says at the time, was the youngest elected mayor of a major city in the United in States, the United States, States of America States, ever, ever. Right? In, in the history of the United States, the youngest elected mayor at 28. And it, of a city like Yonkers, which is not a small town. It had its it, time. It's not a small uh, city. Just under 200,000 people. So Yonkers yeah. was the fourth largest um, city in the state. And he defeated, a, actually, up until that point, it was a beloved six term mayor, right, mm -hmm. Angela Martinelli. Yeah. So he served for 24 years. Over the housing issue. Right. No, the, the only two year terms. Oh, so 12 years. 12 years. Okay. So he served for 12 years. It, even so, six terms, no matter whether it's two or four years, really says something. He lost once and came back and won again. Which is even more impressive. Yeah. I mean, that's really impressive. Yeah. Um, and for those of you, as I'm sure a lot of you, if not all of you, are aware uh, of the uh, monthly magazine, Westchester Magazine and Hudson Valley Magazine, Angela Martinelli's son, Ralph Martinelli, is the publisher uh, of, of those publications. Um, so this young, very young mayor, uh, you might say wet behind the ears, was what he was on the city council before that, mm -hmm. but no other political. No. Experience. He was a lawyer. Lawyer, and he was a policeman when he was younger. Nick Wazisko, yeah. right, a, a policeman. So he ran and defeated uh, six-term mayor Angela Martinelli on the platform of, you know, we oppose this it was uh, order for housing desegregation. We're not going to, you know, we oppose it. We're going to appeal. It's a one issue. It. it was okay. a one-issue race. Right. Angela Martinelli said, I've looked at the research. I've listened to the lawyers. We have to obey the law. Um, mayoral candidate Wasisco said, uh, I'm an attorney. I don't necessarily agree. When I'm in there, we're going to fight and try to overturn this decision. Right. Okay. So then we, and, and it was a very interesting uh, sequence in the TV show, the HBO show, um, showing Angelo Martinelli during the campaign, and Mayor Martinelli, and showing Nick Wasisco. And Wasisco goes into it. It, at the beginning, it's like he's a sacrificial lamb, right? Yeah, that was that was the that plan. was the whole point, right? <laughs> yeah. Like you know, uh, yeah. he's a young guy; he has a big future ahead of him. So let's just put you up, but you're not going to win. Exactly, right? you're not going to win. That was the thought. And he was as shocked as anybody when he won, right? He didn't expect to win. It, it became the, the entire the entire east side got mobilized with one issue: Hey, we have a, a young guy running who says we can win. Right. We have the other guy who has been our mayor for as long as anyone knows. Is saying he's going to comply. Angelo must be wrong. Let's right. get him out and get the right. new guy in, and then you know the rest right. of that story. And, and again, uh, so I want to also, as we're talking about this, bring in the show because it, it's <coughs> one of the very best miniseries I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just extremely well done. It's going to win, I'm sure, a raft of awards, including, by the way, for the lead, Oscar Isaac, who uh, both you and I and a lot of critics agree is phenomenal. I mean, he, this guy, it's a breakthrough role. He's going to become a major star now. He really is. Um, because it wasn't an easy role, and he did an incredible job with it. Um, and so, so there's a, another great scene that just, you know, and this is the whole thing about TV or filmmaking is it, the whole um, axiom is show, don't tell. You know, that's what you say about uh, filmmaking or, or, or television. Uh, so he dri he's driving into a neighborhood that's Angela Martinelli's neighborhood. Yes. And he like stops the car, and I think he was with. Uh, he was with his Christi girlfriend and wife, wife at the time. Yeah. And he, he he can't believe it. He stops the car. He gets out. There are handmade signs even on lawns, lawn signs for him in Angelo Martinelli's uh, neighborhood or district. Yes. And that was sort of a turning point in the election, as it's depict the way they depicted it. Like he's the guy's going to win, so he wins, right? And then tell us, uh, Neil, what happens it, it, between the time he wins and is inducted. I think that scene uh, is major. I think it did two things. One, it was the first time that the new guy realized he was going to win. But it also, as, as events would have it, in, it, made, it uh, made him realize that there was no turning back. And if he got in the wrong place like Angela mm, Martinelli oh, was very in the wrong place, oh. that he would be destroyed. Well, between winning the election in November and his inauguration in January, the movie shows, he was told that the Yonkers appeal had been denied. So he knew going in. By the federal in, appeals court. Yes. So, so basically it said that what Leonard Sand ruled, saying you will abide by this housing desegregation order, 
and then the city the, went to well, an the, appeals court. And well, they just the, the appeals court upheld Judge Sand, and right. Yonkers took that decision to the Supreme Court. And between his election and his inauguration, the Supreme Court decided not to hear the case, which meant the appellate division stood, ruling the order stood, stood, which right. means that could not be appealed. So even becoming mayor, he knew that he was going to have to change I mean, his which position. Is, which is, again, one of the reasons that it makes for you know, great drama. And I said earlier in the program, you know, a fictional program, I didn't, what I meant was that you know, they made a, a movie about it or a miniseries um, based on... on true events. Um, it wasn't a documentary. That was my point. And, um, and, and so it makes for great drama. This is, this is what you know, drama really uh, depends on or relies on is this irony. I mean, it's an incredible real life irony that this guy beat a hugely popular mayor, mm -hmm. you know, on this, like you said, a one, was, issue, one, a, issue. A, one issue election. And then he had to do a total 180 by the time he took office. So the people you know, went yeah. crazy. Crazy. Right. They thought he sold them down the river. They thought he was disingenuous. He wasn't. Facts changed. No, and, and I have to say, um, you know, the one thing about him, I mean, I, of course, I, I never knew him. You worked for him or with him, or he worked for you. We can talk about that. <laughs> um, you know, you're the city manager, and he's a, what do you call it, a weak mayor at the time, mean, meaning... Is that what the phrase is? It, it, Weak mayor meaning he's a part-time mayor. Part-time mayor. The, and you're the city and you're manager the was the chief executive. City manager. Different right. than Yorktown. Yeah. Um, but but uh, not different than some of the smaller communities. Uh, yeah. In, in, and so in by, by weak mayor, just to make sure we clarify, it means it's that the position is legislated to be weak, not that he was individually uh, it's not a. He doesn't not, have an administrative. It's, it's not a subjective criticism. No. It's, yeah, no. it's an objective job description, um, and and so um, yeah, so he realized. So my point is that what I admire about he was pragmatic. He was being totally pragmatic. He right? was. He was being pragmatic. Yeah. He was. He was an attorney. Right. He realized he couldn't. You know, once you go fight. to the what Supreme Court, you it's over. Fight the Supreme Court. And right. um, he, you know, he told the people, and they just didn't want to hear didn't it. Didn't want to hear. And of course, one of the you know the, the very sort of famous scenes, you might say. Uh, again, based on true events, uh, unfortunately, you know, the human nature sometimes could be really ugly, really ugly and evil, that he, he received bullets, right? They received bullets in the mail. We all did. Did you? Yeah. You did too? Yeah. We had, the, we had a 24-hour uh, armed protection for the council members and for me for a few months. Did anybody ever actually come up to you face to face? And no. No. Because people, people, people like that are cowards. People called. They're absolute know, cowards. They, yeah. You know, called my wife when I was at work, and yeah. you know, uh, people oh, they were did, very. They did that. You know, you know, this is. Uh, I, I knew these people. My, you know, my dad and mom you, still you live. You grew up in Yonkers. Yeah, I, not only did I grew up in Yonkers, but I grew up in the epicenter of the of the school they tore down. That's school four. That's my neighborhood. The people that we dragged out of city council meetings and arrested were people I grew up with. My mom wow. and dad still live about 500 yards from one of the low-income housing sites. So I knew, wow. I know, these people, not, yeah. you know, it was, it was home to me. And, right. and these people were good people. I didn't think they were racist. I thought they were misled, misguided, s scared. They had run from the Bronx, most of them, because they had seen the neighborhoods change and they thought that their fear was gonna be realized. Right, and, and, and speaking of that, Neil, um, I mean, just to complete for, for the moment, uh, Mayor Wasisco's arc. Um, so, I mean, in, in the worst way possible, it ruined him, because we'll get to that too, but it profoundly ruined him, literally. You know, not, um, he didn't win the next election. He lost to uh, uh, Spallone, Spallone, to city mm -hmm. councilman. Uh, what was his first name? Hank. Hank Spallone, right. But, but I wanted to also uh, mention uh, with what you were just saying, especially, is another great character, but it's a real person, and that's the point. Uh, if this was a fictional character, the actual credibility of it would, would probably be compromised because you'd be watching going, well, I can't really believe that. And I'm talking about the neighborhood woman, Mary Dorman, mm -hmm. who started off being very virulently opposed to it. They, they show her and her husband in a couple of scenes watching TV and the coverage of this and making it clear that, you know, she was against, also against the housing and the desegregation. And 
along the way, she did a 180 and became an advocate. Right. She was as opposed to the housing as anybody else in the city. And, and uh, went to every council meeting, was very active, very angry. And then finally, I think, over the years, she realized that it was inevitable, and she did some things to help it, which, which you see in the movie. Right, and that's what's, uh, actually, that's what is very uplifting, yeah. her character, because, you know, she, what she, uh, I think, represents and demonstrates uh, or displays is humanism. She's really, you know, she wouldn't say that on the thing. She wasn't that, you know, that kind of a person maybe who would use that, that kind of word maybe, but she's a humanist because she understood how what was being done or mandated affected individual people. You know, it wasn't just about her emotions uh, and her self-centered interests. It was about that this is good for these people. And she got to know, mm -hmm. right? She got to know that other woman. Yeah. Who, um, she also got to the point where, um, on her own, that both her organization, Save Yonkers, and some of the elected officials did not. And that was... It's inevitable that housing is coming. There's even a scene in the movie where her organization was protesting. Right. And she said, they're building it. R right. When she goes up to them and she goes, what don't you get what about you? the fact and they're building it? Yeah. Terrific scene in the movie. I mean, yes. You could pr protest all you want, but I guess you're wrong <laughs> right. because there's bulldozers It's happening here. before your eyes. Yeah. And, right. and, and that, that was a great scene in the movie. And I thought it was r real. But you know what else she represents? Um, uh, again, in a, a whole... You know, dramatic context is she's the voice of reason, yeah. actually, right? Oh, and she was not she, initially. No, but that's, but that's what makes yep. her character so powerful, is that here is somebody who, and, and I talk about this all the time, especially in, you know, the current culture we have with politics and the noise, the noise that you hear, where people aren't fully informed about an issue, they'll hear something, they'll repeat it, uh, it's mostly emotion. It's not because they understand the issue. Um, they haven't looked into it themselves. They'll just repeat what somebody else is saying, and then it becomes uh, like mob mentality. Mm -hmm. And so I call that noise. And, and what the opposite of noise is, is nuance. And that's what she represents to me. She started off accepting the noise of other people and the city council people who you know, only had their own interests. They, they could care less about these you know, their uh, constituents, um, at least the constituents that would benefit from public housing. But she represented somebody who understood the nuances and then said, yeah, that's, I understand, this is good. This is a good thing. And she supported it. You know, so that, so she's a great role model, that woman. Um, and again, just on the um, production value side of, of this discussion uh, with the miniseries itself, uh, Catherine Keener, also has been acclaimed as one of the best uh, performances in this movie, who played Mary yeah, Dorman. she was great. She made her a real person. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could really... Uh, I, I, I would have bet the ranch that uh, Mary Dorman would never have, never have acquiesced and, and, yeah. come, and somehow, I guess because of her makeup, she figured it out. Right, and you know, you know something else, Neil, again, in acting terms, because I do just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> I mean, I take acting classes. I'm a student of acting. Um, that the, the way that Catherine Keener, the actress, accomplished that, it's called an acting term shading. Her performance was very understated. It was, and it's shading, you know. Even when she's totally opposed to it, the way she's opposed to it um, was in sort of a very measured way. It wasn't totally crazy. You know, she wasn't a maniac. Um, uh, she just was somebody who was conditioned culturally to be opposed to that. That's how I looked at it, there, there, right? There, she was brought up that way. I, a lot of us were brought right. up that way. No, but it, it's, you know, what they say, nature and versus nurture. Yeah. So it's, it's partly that you're, you know, you're brought up that way, and it's partly the environment that you live with and reinforces that in you. But, you know, you know she was able to uh, sort of break through that, you might say. Um, let's talk a little bit about your relationship with Mayor Nick Wisisco. You're the city manager. Uh, so, as with city or town managers, um, as you put it, that's called a council manager form of government. Right. And the city manager is the chief executive, right. and the mayor is, in, in effect, like the um, president of the city council. Yonkers right. has a city council president. They didn't then. The mayor presided over city council meetings, legislations, 
not the day-to-day -day operations of the city. Yeah. So you didn't run the meetings? No. Right, but you ran the city. Yes. That's, that's the point. Uh, he ran the meetings, that, you ran the city. That caused right. the friction between uh, Nick and me. Yeah. Right. Um, but Even though he knew going in that it was a council manager form of government, but I guess he had no experience with it. If Nick was anything, he was a really smart guy. He yeah. really was. Yeah. Um, but uh, as happened in other cities and with other, even in Yonkers, the mayor, which was just really a figurehead, um, thought that he should do more. People thought they should do more. But Yonkers was a mayor the council manager for my government, where right. I was clearly the chief executive. So I provided all the budget, police department, fire department, uh, ev everything. Right. And, and Nick didn't always accept that. Right. And, and I think a lot of people watching, uh, me included, when you were telling me this uh, as we were preparing uh, for the show, uh, and you used one example that even that I, I was uh, astounded by, um, and, you know, I've covered politics. A lot of my friends, as you know, are politicians. And, um, and, and that example was you were saying, like, for, uh, it could be him or anybody uh, that he wanted, or could, I think it was somebody else, it doesn't matter who it is, but somebody who is a mayor, let's say, uh, in that form of government where there's a city manager, let's say, would want to go and look at legal records, Yeah, for no, example. you can't do that. And you, can't, and you said to me, and I said, the mayor can't go and look at legal records? And you said no. No. The, if anything to do with the business of the city has to come to the city manager. Now, you know, you try to be as cooperative as you can, but the biggest thing is when, like the mayor will call a commission or department head and demand something. He can't do that because they don't work for the mayor. Yeah. It's, it's hard to get that concept. Now they do, in Yorktown, Michael Grace is the boss. He's the elected right, so that, chief executive. Oh, oh, that's what you might call analogously a strong supervisor yeah. position. Was, He's a, in, he's a full-time supervisor. In, yeah. in, in right. White Plains, right. and now in right. Yonkers, right. Mayor Spano in Yonkers right. is the boss. Right. It wasn't that way when we were there. Right, that, right. That changed. And, and, you and you're the, the one movie. you told me who actually... Well, I, I helped the mayor and, and, um, get it and, and make and it happen. It was time. Right. Uh, I think two or three other charter revision committee failed. By the way, Angelo Martinelli tried as much as anybody. He, right. he wanted to be strong mayor. He understood the form of government. He didn't always like it either. And right. I, I get that. Right. The mayor runs and, and he's responsible for all the people and he doesn't run the city. So that's right. a very unusual concept. Right. So anyhow, it's unbelievable. Did you see that? Uh, it's hard to believe that we're at the end of the show. It seemed to me we, <laughs> we just started. And believe me, you know, because I love talking to you. Uh, uh, we could do this again and there's a lot more to talk about. Um, and I just want to wrap it up by saying, just so everybody knows, um, one, uh, on the, you know, this really is a Shakespearean tragedy. Yeah. I mean, they're saying it's not a, and that's why I could see where this uh, really, really top of the line TV producer, David Simon, said, wow, this is great TV. Or make, it's a Shakespearean tragedy because Mayor Nick Wazisco, as they show at the end of the thing, takes a gun to his head and that, that, was, that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that was, was really it. something. And the other thing I just want to mention quickly, Neil, is that um, somewhat, I don't know if you call it poetic justice, but um, again, there's some dramatic element to this that you now are building public housing, right? Uh, or is it, well, is it called, pub, not public housing? No, it's workforce housing. Affordable housing yeah. in Yorktown, Compound Crossing. And it was great. So, yeah. People there come from all walks of life. Yeah. It is and not one thing over another. It's great. Right. And we also should quickly mention, and this is where we can go into one of more other shows. You went from the city manager of Yonkers to the deputy county executive right. under Andrew O'Rourke in right. 1991. One. Yeah. So we could be talking about that on another show. And I especially want to thank, uh, thank you, Neil. Like, I didn't know this. You were saying this is the first TV interview you've done. Since then. Since then. I really appreciate it. It's Thanks, great. Bruce. As always, talking it to you. It was fun. Uh, and my guest has been Neil DeLuca, who was the city manager of Yonkers uh, in the late 80s and then a deputy county executive of Westchester under Andrew O'Rourke. And you have been watching Hudson Valley WXYZ with Bruce the Blog. Uh, watch us next time and every time. And remember, when Bruce the Blog listens, people talk. Thank you. <laughs>